Right everyone, weapon collector here. Right, I'm going to do a sax build today. So it will be made from this, it's a kindling stick chopper. So it's going to be very thick as well. Look how thick that is. That's probably 10 mil thick I reckon. Getting on for that anyway. Um, the design will be something roughly like this. I'm not 100% sure what shape the guard will be, the pommel will be that shape though. It will have a nice leather sheath and it will also be for sale if anyone wants to buy it afterwards. So I think the first thing I'll do is take the handle off, see what the tang looks like and cut the tip. Right, I'm just going to cut a big bit of steel for the guard. I'm going to be using one of these. But, I would say, all of the projects you see me do, you can just use things like a hacksaw or a hand drill. It's just, I've got an injured side and a shoulder that never stops hurting. Which means if I cut by hand, it really, you know, it really gives me a lot of pain. So. I've got to use power tools, but you do not need to. You could cut through this easily with a hacksaw. When I'm drilling, you could just use a hand drill, stuff like that. Right, I am going to do a bit of hand sawing, but uh, if it's a little bit, it doesn't matter so much. So I'm going to cut a little step in this for the guard to sit into. Sadly, there are always some things where I have to use my poor off shoulders. But... Right, so we've now got the little stepped bit for the guard to sit against. I'm now going to mark out where I want to drill it, because I'm going to drill the hole, then shape this, I think. It might be easier, because I can clamp that in easier in the little vise to drill the holes. Right, so I shall drill a hole through there, close to that as I possibly can, then I'll probably start filing it square so that it can fit over. Once I've got a nice fit, I can work out the sort of shape I want to do this, and I think it'll be some sort of oval kind of shape, or a, I don't know what you call it, but pointed at each end, if that makes sense. Right, so that's the hole drilled, now I just need to square off the edges. So that will just be with a little square file, essentially. Right, so this is where I am at the minute. I'm undecided with this handle. I may use this handle in this configuration. I think if I do, I'll take a bit off the sides though to make it so it's not round. Um, that depends though, I'm gonna have to look. I'm just doing the pommel at the minute, which will be that shape there 
I won't bother showing myself cutting that because it would be exactly the same as you know this. It's just cutting it with a hacksaw or whatever you've got, drilling a hole through it. But I'll show you it once. I may show you myself shaping it. So I just need to drill the hole through and then I can start shaping it. I'll show you where I'm up to now, just so you do know. So there it is there. So I have just drilled. It's a rectangle shape at the minute. I've drilled the first hole in. I'm going to drill the next hole to enlarge it. And then I can start shaping that. Right, <coughs> I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but I've put a little nail here and here. And what I'm hoping this is going to do is when I, I'm going to glue this tang, put this handle on, and then hammer the handle onto the nails, and it should stop it spinning then. It'll be glued anyway, and it'll be peened and all that, but I reckon that'll just add a little bit to it to stop it, um, stop it potentially spinning. gonna work actually. That work good. Decided I'm going to blue the metal on this. It should give it a much better finish for um, people using it later. So to blue metal like this, you get a metal bluing kit. Brush it on. You can see it's starting to take effect as soon as you put it on there. Recommend you wear gloves when you do this. You may need to do a few coats. Right, so this is the stage I'm at now. It's all blued. I just need to do the handle now. So I think I'm going to do a burned burn finish. Burn it, sand it. And then um, either oil it or... I'm not sure what I've got at the minute. I may be able to lacquer it. But I'll see, but it'll be burning it first. Not sure how well you're going to see this, but I'm going to wax this handle. Um, I've done this before, and as long as you give it a really good rub in and um, sort of buff it afterwards, it's not slippery or anything because you'd think it would be. Right, so that is the actual sax finished. I'm really happy with that actually. It's not going to be much of a slicer, you know, the thickness of that blade and the angle of that grind. But it would be a hell of a chopper. And you could cut things with it, but it's not going to be anything that's going to be um, razor sharp. But it's definitely going to be a hefty old chopper, I reckon. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And I think it's got a reasonably... It's very traditionally made, in, in a way. Um, you know, it looks reasonably traditional and sort of basic if that makes sense. I don't mean that in a bad way but the old ones, you know, simple is probably more the word I'm looking for. So. Time to make the sheath now. So this is pretty much what the sheath will be. It'll just be a folded and sewed bit. So it'll be over like that. It'll be shaped along there, sewn along there, sewn along there and a belt loop on. That would be the basic shape of the sheath. And it would be sewn along there and along there and possibly with 
this as a spacer in between if it needs it. I've decided for the belt loop I'm going to do a little thing like that and then that will be on like that. So you could, I could then add another loop to there, like a dangler type thing I suppose. So I'll add another loop on there and then that will be how it can be hung. So with this piece of leather I've thinned out this side and this side so when they're sewn together it'll be a little bit thinner, you don't really need it that thick. That will be then glued here, make sure when you're doing this you've got it on the right or left side whichever way you want to hang it. So that would be right. I'm going to glue that on, drill some holes through, turn it over, make a little groove for the stitching to sit in so the blade doesn't catch it and then sew that on. So now those holes are on this side, I can use either a knife or something to make a groove so that when the knife goes in it won't catch that bit of thread. So I've done the little grooves, I can now stitch this on, which is basically a case of just getting a piece of thread, you can use anything you want, I use like proper waxed stuff. Um, yeah, basically, I just try to decide to start from the inside or the outside. Probably start from the inside. I'm going to, be able to flatten the knot. So just so basically in and out, and then what you do, you come back, and then that fills in the holes. Right, so that's the belt loop bit on. I can now run a bead of glue along here and here. Stick this down. And then I can start drilling and well marking and drilling for the holes. So I've marked a line where I want to do the stitching. You can mark the stitching any way you want. You could just use a ruler. What I tend to do is get my homemade stitching chisel thing. This one has nice wide Sort of teeth. If you use the ones you can buy, if you see like mine's got four stitches for about an inch, well these ones have got one, two, this one's got six per inch, um, and I think it just mean, makes the stitching take so much longer. So I use my own one, but what you could do, you could just use a ruler, do a straight line and then just mark every five millimeters or however big you want the stitches. So what I do with this, I'll put this on here, and then I'll just mark the stitches basically. So I won't be putting this thing right through, but it's just enough to put a little hole in it. It's just a mark, it's just a guideline basically. But you don't need to do this. I'll just do it because I can get a nice stitch line there. So I'll carry on doing that. And then I'm going to drill through, which I don't need to show you. And then I'll stitch again, which I don't really need to show you. because I'm... Right, so that's the holes. I've also put a little groove along just to make the um, stitching sit nicely under. I have decided now I'm going to put a rivet here, here and here. And what I've got are copper rivets. I'd rather use brass, but I think copper would copper would still look quite nice anyway. Oh no, I have got three brass ones. I probably could do. Yeah, I just happened to have three brass ones. I just noticed that. Right, I, I could use some brass ones then. So yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the hole there, there and there. And then I'm going to stitch between, then put the rivets in. And I still need to put my maker's mark on at some point. Right, that is the sheath stitched. I've put one of the rivets in. Basically, to do these rivets, it's really easy. You just basically do this back one, I think. Push them through. Like that. Put the washer on. You can get proper tools to do this, but um, <laughs> at the minute I'll just use 
one of these um, screwdriver that can have multiple heads and then just force that rivet down using that so that's that side cut that off so it's not so long and then just peen it over so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start taking off the edges of this. You don't, I've got one of these edging tools, you don't need these, you can do it with a, uh, you can sand the edge off. But you, if you do use these, you can get a slightly better finish. But, you don't actually need these, I've done this loads of times without these. Right, I'm going to burnish these edges now. So you just need to wet them a bit, just a little bit. And then you can either use just a piece of wood. This is something I've made. This is one you can buy. But just a piece of wood would do. And you just basically rub the edge. And it's I think it's more about friction rather than pressure. Alright, I've put some maker's marks on. I'm going to dye this now. So it'll be black. So I'll just keep putting this on, but as you can see it goes on really well, just put it on a bit of a sponge. I'm just using proper leather dye, it's worth using proper leather dye, because it really just, just works perfectly and quickly. Right, so this is the finished knife. I've had to come indoors to finish off the video, because I actually made this a couple of days ago, but it's been finished for a while. So it's got the nice leather sheath, I think that came out pretty nice. You can see my maker's mark there. I think the black finish looks good, the rivets look alright, nice bit of stitching. Yeah, and it sort of shows the shape of the blade underneath as well, which I quite like. So, yeah. so there is the blade. And I've mentioned this before, I think, but this isn't going to be a really, really sharp knife due to the thickness of it. To get a sort of decent bevel on this, you'd have to bring it back to about here or maybe all the way to be able to get a decent sort of cutting edge on it. But it would certainly do well chopping things and it, and it will cut the bluing came out quite nice I think eight mil thick blade I burnt and waxed the handle and that does not move at all none of the fittings on this move at all nice thick guard and the um, quite large pommel but sort of quite traditional looking fits the hand quite well I've got sort of average size hands but yeah really happy with this and if anyone wanted to buy it let me know because I will be selling this soon if someone wanted to make me an offer in this video feel free to um, you know and I'll let you know whether I would accept that offer but otherwise there'll be a video coming later with this for sale if people are up for it and, and a couple of others yeah, there it is. That is the handmade, homemade sax that if you copy the stuff I do, you could probably make it in a day, including the sheath. Right, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you're interested. See you later.